all right uh, so the previous class we had just begun with the introduction on fet biasing configurations the first type was fixed bias configuration okay so we have uh, uh, you know seen how a fixed bias actually looks like okay uh, how to obtain the quiescent point based on the transfer characteristics and also the network okay we had seen how to obtain the solution the second type of the configuration prescribed uh, in your syllabus is self bias configuration and the third one is voltage divider bias configuration okay uh, so you know very quickly we'll just uh, uh, you know go through the fixed bias configuration again in case you know if anybody was absent hmm? uh, so it's it's the simplest form of the biasing arrangement okay for the n channel jfet it is uh, one of the few fet configurations that can be solved just directly either by using the mathematical or the graphical approach okay now you know just to state about uh, the graphical and the mathematical approach okay let us just spend a minute on this so that the things will be clear for us okay uh, what we did was for the case of a fixed bias configuration okay so if this is ids versus vgs right so you have the transfer characteristics okay and this is idss okay and uh, okay all right so what does the mathematical approach state okay the mathematical approach states that you need to have the expression for the drain current id which is idss 1 minus vgs upon vp the whole square okay so basically there is a non linear relationship between the gate to source voltage and the drain current now the mathematical approach says that you will have to find out the expression for vgs which was minus of vgg okay the previous class we have seen this expression right now this value has to be substituted okay in the place of vgs okay and whatever uh, we will be obtaining that will be our idq okay which means the drain current at the quiescent point okay so that's how we determine the drain current value mathematically now graphically also it can be found out okay the graphical way the uh, mathematical way is accurate whereas the graphical way is simple but approximate okay but uh, the values are well within the range so that we can always uh, go with the approximate method also so in the approximate method what do we do you know we first plot the the transfer characteristics okay or the transfer curve for a particular jfet now how do we plot it we plot it based on the drain characteristics okay uh, we have already seen it right okay we plot the transfer characteristics based on the drain characteristics and once we obtain the the transfer curve uh, you know we should also know the vgs condition which is minus vgg okay so that is common for both the things right so you just plot the network solution this is called network solution right okay and that's the device characteristics okay so wherever uh, you know both the characteristics meet the device as well as the network line meet we call it as the quiescent point okay uh, now uh, how do you obtain this okay see either you can consider for a fixed bias there is absolutely uh no difference between the mathematical and the graphical approach okay you can just go through the statement it is one of the few fet configurations that can be solved just as directly either by using the mathematical way or the graphical approach now even in the graphical approach we don't need any you know graph points here why because vgs is fixed to a value of minus vgg okay so you know even even if you take some uh, other value than ids which is ids 
okay uh, by 4 or maybe 2 okay but still the line will be the same one because id is independent of vgs i'll repeat here vgs is independent on id for the case of fixed bias okay so uh, you know due to that the bias is getting fixed to a particular vgg value all right so this was the circuit that we had seen in our previous class for dc analysis let me reiterate those two points especially with respect to the dc analysis for dc analysis the capacitive reactance is 1 upon 2 pi fc uh, f is 0 okay because of dc signal so 1 upon f will be 0 so that xc is infinite okay that means you will have to consider open circuits for the capacitors whenever there is dc analysis so that means these two capacitors should be considered as open circuit so that the circuit gets simplified okay no need of this input nor the output okay so we have to analyze this particular configuration just with respect to the biasing voltage which is vdd and another supply additional supply at the gate which is called vgg okay now since jfet is a voltage control device ig is zero since ig is zero that means uh, you know there is no current flowing which means there is absolutely no drop across rg see if current used to flow only then we can say that there is a voltage drop if the current is zero then there is no voltage drop across rg if there is no voltage drop then it can be assumed to be a short circuit okay right so when it is assumed to be a short circuit all that we can say is minus vgg okay by applying kvl if we apply kvl it is minus vgg minus vgs now where do we have vgs it is between gate and the source terminals okay minus vgs equal to zero so that ultimately vgs is equal to minus of vgg so that's a very important expression for us okay and this is a fixed value because of it which we use the term fixed bias configuration okay fine so that is the simplified circuit simplified circuit right after ignoring the capacitor the capacitors so how do you obtain the solution for the fixed bias configuration okay well take the device characteristics and then the network line okay so based upon this expression vgs equal to minus of vgg just draw the line and wherever the network line coincides with that of the device characteristics we will be obtaining the quiescent point so this gives us the solution okay so that it is idq value right now similarly you can also see uh, there are two loops here first one is the input and the second one is output loop so so far we have applied kvl for the input loop kvl can also be applied for the output loop okay, you can just observe see this vdd indicates it is positive and we have a negative here okay so negative is being grounded so that means again we have a output loop to which you can apply kvl okay so if we apply kvl then it is vdd is equal to id rd plus i mean the drop across the resistor rd and the drop across the drain to source terminals of the j fit so going by that thing the expression that we obtain is vds equal to vdd minus id rd okay so that is another important expression okay so just to summarize what have we done see for uh, any configuration well, uh, after solving the input loop, uh, we want to determine the, uh, the expression for the controlling parameter. For a JFET, the controlling parameter is a voltage and that voltage is VGS. Okay, so our intention is to find the expression for VGS for any configuration. 
once we find it out based upon that we will have to determine the expression for the current okay so once that is also found out okay we are done with the input loop then we will have to go to the output loop wherein the expression for the VDS should be determined okay so for any configuration these three are common all right so uh, we will just go through a numerical based on fixed bias okay uh, you can uh, you know just try to solve it at your uh, leisure time I will just go through some of the things here okay uh, see whenever you get such kind of problems uh, please understand that they are very simple problems they are purely substitution based problems if you just know how to analyze a particular biasing configuration uh, you can very easily solve the numerical okay once you know the relevant expressions for it uh, so that's a fixed bias uh, how do you identify that it's a fixed bias because there is a second supply okay and that is your vgg right okay all right so you have been asked to find out vgsq idq vds vd vg as well as vs and the information or the input parameters that are specified are drain to source saturation current okay and then the pinch off voltage so using these values and by the way your vdd is 16 volts okay so we have these informations now your textbook tries to solve it using both the approaches okay the mathematical approach the first point is to find out vgs okay since you know that vgs equal to minus vgg it is straightforward okay based upon the circuit you can just identify it to be minus 2 volts once you find out the value of vgs substitute in the shockley's equation and find the value of idq okay so if you substitute your idq value comes to around 5.625 milliamperes okay then further uh, solving the output loop VDS equal to VDD minus ID RD it is again a simple substitution based problem wherein the answer is 4.75 volts okay now uh, VD is equal to VDS how is that I mean uh, uh, why is it so if you just observe okay, let me go back to the slide see here if I consider you know two points and let this be VDS if the source is grounded okay there is no resistance here right so that means see VDS is always equal to VD minus VS okay so if VS is 0 then obviously VDS will be equal to VD itself okay so going by that analogy VD is equal to VDS which is same 4.75 VG is again equal to VGS okay uh, minus 2 volts and finally VS is 0 volts why it is being grounded right the source terminal is directly grounded to 0 volts okay so that was the mathematical approach now uh, what about the graphical approach <coughs> the first step is the same finding the value of VGSQ right uh, the only difference in a graphical approach lies with the uh, calculation of idq value how do you find out the value of idq here okay uh, once you have or uh, once you have found out the value of vgsq okay so just draw the line wherever the line intersects with the transfer curve you will be getting your q point which is idq equal to 5.6 so just compare the values Mathematically, IDQ value is 5.625. Graphically, it is 5.6. Okay, so they are almost the same. Okay, so <coughs> uh, these things clearly confirm the fact that mathematical and graphical approaches generate solutions which are quite close. So you can follow either of them. Okay, fine. <coughs> All right. So moving next. Uh, let us look at the self bias configuration the main important points 
or the differentiating points between self bias and fixed bias are as mentioned here the self bias configuration eliminates the need for two dc supplies okay now if you just compare it with the fixed bias you will observe that in a fixed bias there was a additional supply right which was vgg okay now can we somehow remove this additional supply and then obtain the q point is there any way for it okay yes there is a way and that is by using a self bias configuration so the self bias configuration requires only one dc supply vdd and it eliminates the need for vgg first point then the second point is controlling gate to source voltage vgs is now determined by the voltage across the resistor rs introduced in the source leg okay so that's a important point right so let us try to observe the configuration circuit how does it look like so that's the self bias configuration if you compare this with a fixed bias you will observe that there is no vgg here okay for a fixed bias there was vgg but there is no vgg here next for a fixed bias you didn't have source resistor here you have it okay so this is the additional resistor which is being added for self bias configuration right now let us understand its dc analysis again the steps are same for any configuration the first point is wherever there are capacitors open circuit them and then just discard these points okay so that input and output are not required for the dc analysis all that we need is the core internal circuit part without the capacitors okay all right now let us apply the kvl applying kvl okay uh, before applying kvl what is ig here gate current since jfet is a voltage control device the gate current is again zero okay since the gate current is zero again i can apply the same explanation that there is no voltage drop across rg so no voltage drop consider it as a short circuit consider it as short circuit okay uh now if i you know just consider it as a short circuit then the kvl ek, uh, expression will get simplified okay how well uh plus minus that is vgs okay so minus vgs minus of vrs now vrs is the voltage drop across the resistor at the source so it is minus vgs minus vrs equal to 0 so that ultimately vgs equal to minus id into rs now please understand for a fixed bias vgs was fixed bias vgs was equal to minus vgg and this vgg was a fixed value however here vgs all i can say that is linearly dependent upon id right which means as id increases vgs increases or as vgs is made higher id also becomes higher okay so this relationship is extremely important fine so how does this affect the network as well as the solution in finding um for a self bias configuration so let us see the solution right so that is the device characteristics jfet device characteristics and this is the network solution okay uh, the network line based upon the expression okay now why is it like this okay for a fixed bias it was a straight line because it was i mean vgs was equal to minus vgg however here just observe if vgs is zero okay 
what will be the value of IDSS? See, VGS is linearly related with respect to IDS. Okay, so obviously, when VGS is zero, IDS will also be zero. So I have got the first point here. Okay, then the second point, okay, can be obtained like this. Uh, if you want to do it graphically, then you can just assume you know, one value of IDSS. Say if IDSS is eight milliamps. IDSS by 2 will be 4 milliamps. Okay, you can consider any of the points on the drain current curve. Okay, I am considering a suitable value IDSS by 2. So once you do that, find the value of the corresponding VGS. Okay, so you will be getting VGS here somewhere, right? So just join both the points. Okay, so that you will be getting a second point here. So that's your first point, and that's your second point. Okay, now just join it. If you join it, then this particular line coincides with the transfer characteristics at this particular point, okay, which gives you the Q point. That's it. Okay, now you have determined the Q point for a self bias configuration. Okay, uh, <coughs> one thing is that. Uh, VGS equal to minus VRS. Now, how did we directly arrive at ID into RS? See, VRS can be written as IS into RS. Okay, because here it is the source current which is flowing. Right? Now, instead of IS, can I write it as ID? Yes, I can write it as ID. ID into RS. Why it is ID into RS? Because the gate current is zero. Ig equal to zero, so obviously Is will be equal to Id. Okay, so that's how the term Id has appeared here. Okay, fine. All right, so uh, solving it for output loop, Vds equal to Vdd minus Id Rs plus Rd. Okay, so it should, it's again pretty clear. You have positive here, negative. Okay, so just apply KVL for the output loop. If you apply KVL for the output loop, you will be getting the expression VDD. Okay, so this drop must be equal to the drop across the drain resistor plus the drop across drain to source plus the drop across source resistor. So there are three terms involved which you have obtained. So finally VDS is this expression. Okay, now similarly VS is ID into RS, VG is zero because Ig is zero. Okay, and uh, finally, if you want to obtain Vd, uh, you know these things can uh, always be done. Okay. All right. So that was the self-bias configuration. Now the point to be remembered here is that self-bias configuration eliminates the need of using two power supplies. See, always uh, larger the number of power supplies it will add more burden on the particular network okay so lesser the number of you know power supplies uh, more stable will be your operating or the q point so self bias configuration is better when compared to a fixed bias in terms of stability all right so coming to the numerical well it's the same uh, substitution based numerical uh, you can just go through it at your leisure time okay you can just solve it the expressions are the same okay so you can just go through it uh, you know there is nothing uh, uh, you know, special uh, which needs you know explanation for solving the numericals they are simple substitution based numericals then the last one is voltage divider biasing configuration well, it's the most preferred biasing configuration because of its ability to provide better stability. Let me underline this word, provide better stability. Now, how do we quantify the word stability? See, if there are any temperature variations, if there are any you know external environmental changes, then the circuit is pretty stable with respect to those external changes. So when you compare all the three biasing circuits, 
द वोल्टेज डिवाइडर बायसिंग सर्किट इज प्रेटी स्टेबल और मच बेटर वेन कंपेयर टू द अदर थिंग्स ओके फाइन सो दिस इज हाउ द वोल्टेज डिवाइडर बायसिंग सर्किट लुक्स लाइक यू मस्ट बी अवेयर ऑफ दिस पर्टिकुलर कॉम्बिनेशन और सर्क्यूट वाई बिकॉज यू हैव ऑलरेडी स्टडीड इट इन योर बेसिक इलेक्ट्रॉनिक्स विथ रिस्पेक्ट टू बी जे टी ओके बायसिंग सर्क्यूट्स विथ रिस्पेक्ट टू बी जे टी देर यू हैड वोल्टेज डिवाइडर बायसिंग सर्क्यूट हियर द मोस्ट इम्पॉर्टेंट पार्ट इज द कॉम्बिनेशन ऑफ रेजिस्टर्स आर वन एंड आर टू ओके द वोल्टेज गेट्स डिवाइडेड एट दिस पर्टिकुलर पॉइंट राइट सो यू हैव टू फाइंड आउट द वोल्टेज हियर ओके एंड दैट कैन बी फाउंड आउट यूजिंग द वोल्टेज डिवाइडर रूल All right. So again, how do we proceed with the DC analysis? Okay. So the DC analysis says C1 and C2 must be assumed to be open circuits and ignore VI and V0. Okay. So that these things can be removed from the circuit portion. Uh, For a voltage divider biasing circuit, we have one more capacitance at the source end. Okay, it is called source bypass capacitor. So this also must be assumed to be a open circuit, right? Okay, so this can also be ignored. So what is the circuit that we are left with? So that's the circuit which we are left with for the DC analysis purpose. R one, R two. now how do we proceed as i had already mentioned we have to find out the voltage at this particular node vg and this can be found out by using the uh, you know the voltage parallel uh, expression okay which says vg okay see if you want to find out voltage at this particular point then uh, just take the ratio of this resistance plus the combination of r1 and r2 so that is r2 Divided by R1 plus R2, multiplied by the voltage which is appearing at the other end, okay, which is VDD. Right. So this is how you determine the value of VG. So once VG is found out, okay. So now let us just apply KVL to it. Applying KVL, okay. Uh, before we apply KVL again, since IG is equal to zero. For a JFET, there is no voltage drop across this R2. Okay, we'll have to understand that. So again, okay, since there is no voltage drop, the expression, okay, how I can just write it is VGS is equal to what is VG? VGS is combination of R2 upon R1 plus R2 multiplied by VDD. So that is VG. Okay, the voltage which is appearing here minus I S into R S. Now, since I S equal to I D, can write it as V G minus I D into R S. Okay, so that's the expression which we have obtained. Okay, uh, while uh, applying K V L to the input loop. Now, again applying K V L to the output loop. Okay, uh, before that. uh one most important point here is that okay see for a self bias the expression for vgs was just write it for a self bias configuration the expression for vgs was minus id into rs so there was a linear relationship between vgs and ids right so for that you know we had got the network line like this okay now however here for a case of voltage divider bias the expression for vgs is vg minus id into rs okay so that's the expression for Voltage divider bias. What does that mean? Let I D be equal to zero. Okay. See, because uh, we'll have to draw the network line, right? 
okay so that uh, we'll be getting the extreme points so let id be equal to 0 if that is equal to 0 what do we get vgs is equal to vg so that's the first point which we get and similarly let vgs be equal to 0 so that vg is equal to id into rs okay or id is vg upon rs so that's the second expression okay so let id be equal to 0 if i just if this is id and if this is vgs okay if id equal to 0 that means uh, vgs is equal to vg so i'll be getting the first point here somewhere okay based on the first expression then when vgs is 0 when vgs is 0 id equal to vg upon rs so the second point will be here somewhere okay depending upon the value of the source resistor right now the transfer characteristic will be on the other side right so what should i do i need to join these two points and then extend it okay uh, please ignore this line okay and then just extend it so that where it coincides with the transfer curve this will be my q point okay so the same thing is being done in the next slide you can just observe so that's the first point uh, when vgs is zero uh, sorry when uh, id is zero right so that is point one similarly second point is when vgs is zero so that's the second point now just join them and then extend it so that it uh, passes through the transfer curve and the point of intersection is our q point okay very simple so we have obtained similarly all right uh, expressions can be obtained for vds vd vs now ir1 ir1 is the current flowing through the resistance r1 is equal to ir2 okay it should be understood because ig is zero the same current flows along this path okay so ir1 equal to ir2 is equal to vdd upon r1 plus r2 okay so that's the uh, solution for the voltage divider configuration similarly the numerical again i am <coughs> stating that they are just substitution based problems you can just write okay fine all right uh, so to summarize we are done with three uh, you know biasing configurations with respect to jfet the first one is uh, fixed bias second one is self bias and the third one is voltage divider biasing configuration apart from these three there are some other uh, configurations also but for now uh, i think we'll just uh, restrict to these three configurations okay all right so if there are any doubts then i'll clarify students <laughs>